Okay, so I'm going to cover oxidative stress in, in this video, and I'm going to start with oxygen. So oxygen usually exists as two molecules of oxygen, or O2. Now, I have uh, these two atoms of oxygen over here, and each oxygen atom shares these two electrons with each other. And that's, uh, so creating a pair of electrons. So elements prefer to exist, uh, to have their electrons exist in pairs. So again, each oxygen atom here is sharing uh, an electron with each other, two electrons actually. Okay, so a free radical is a molecule having an unpaired valence electron. Now a valence shell is the outermost shell of electrons around the nucleus. So again, you can see how oxygen usually prefers to exist as two oxygen atoms, again, because they are sharing electrons, creating a pair of electrons, two pairs of electrons between each of them. And a free radical is when you uh, have an unpaired electron in the outer valence shell. And again, the valence shell is the outermost shell of electrons around an atom. So that's how we get a free radical, is again, having one electron rather than a pair in the outermost shell of electrons around an atom. Okay, so when we get that, this is called a superoxide um, atom, a superoxide radical actually, or reactive oxygen species, is because this oxygen has an extra electron, electron in its outer valence shell. Now, Free radicals cause oxidative stress is because they go out and they try to steal electrons from other molecules in the environment. And that's what is termed oxidative stress because when an electron gives up in, I mean, excuse me, when a molecule gives up an electron, that molecule is oxidized. So when a molecule loses an electron, it is oxidized. Uh, and that's how we come up with the term oxidative stress. Now, for us to safely uh, remove free radicals and neutralize them, we can use antioxidants. Now, antioxidants can safely add an electron to this sole electron here, neutralizing the um, damaging potential of free radicals. Now, if we don't have any electrons to donate from these antioxidants, these free radicals will try to pull electrons from our DNA, our cell membrane, and our proteins. <clears throat> so that's one way that we can neutralize the effects of free radicals is by having enough antioxidants to again donate safely electrons to these unpaired uh, to this unpaired valence electron. Now over here, I have a, just a few antioxidants here, and we have glutathione, which is a tripeptide and we have vitamin C, vitamin E, and CoQ10. So glutathione actually has the ability to recycle vitamin C, and vitamin C can actually recycle our vitamin E. And CoQ10, again, is another antioxidant, and that can actually recycle vitamin E as well. So you can see right here how some of the antioxidants work synergistically with each other. Now, another way for us to remove this superoxide radical is by these two enzymes, superoxide dismutase and catalase. First, the super, um, superoxide radical is converted into hydrogen peroxide by a superoxide dismutase. Now, this is a, an enzyme, and this superoxide dismutase is encoded in our um, genes found in the nucleus. And this requires copper and zinc. And we actually have another superoxide dismutase found in our mitochondria that requires manganese. Now, the one in the mitochondria is found through a lot of bacteria. And in fact, mitochondria is a gram-negative bacteria. If you want to learn more about the ancestry of mitochondria, you can watch my mitochondria part two video when I go into that. But again, um, our mitochondria has a superoxide dismutase that is also able to convert this superoxide, which is a free radical, into hydrogen peroxide. Now, from hydrogen peroxide, we have an enzyme called catalase. And again, enzymes are proteins. Now, we have this um, 
enzyme catalase that requires four atoms of iron. And this catalase can convert hydrogen peroxide into two molecules of water and oxygen. So we have two ways to safely remove or neutralize free radicals, one by antioxidants, and the other way is this two enzyme punch here that can safely convert these um, radicals into water and oxygen. Now again, if we aren't able to do that, these free radicals will aggressively try to pull electrons from our DNA, protein, and cell membranes, which uh, lead to something called oxidative stress. Now, oxidative stress can be caused from cigarettes, pesticide, air pollution, UV, radiation, stress, and excessive exercise. Now, the long-term consequences of oxidative stress can lead to heart disease, cancer, autism, Alzheimer's, and most mental illnesses.